Welcome to Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South Africa is experiencing its worst ever bout of load shedding. Chen Screamer joins me to discuss the crisis, as well as the outlook for addressing this long-standing constraint to growth and investment. Hi, Terence. Hi, nice Chanel. What is ESCOM saying about the load shedding crisis and its causes? You know, ESCOM warned ahead of winter that we could have a very difficult period ahead because the coal fleet is under maintained and is getting very old, some plants over 40 years. And we know we've been seeing progressively this energy availability factor declining. So over the last three years, we've been seeing an intensifying trend of load shedding. And we, now, we are now in our worst ever year. I think by the end of this year, we'll see a terrible return in terms of our load shedding figures. And we're having our most intensive winter uh, of load shedding at, at stage, between stage four and stage six this week. And the reason why we are so intense this week is that although we were in load shedding even before industrial action took place, this wildcat strike which uh, is illegal and has actually gone against the wishes of the recognized unions, uh, NUM and NUMSA, who have urged their workers to go back to work. You know, this has really intensified this period of load shedding. So about three stages of the current load shedding. So we know we often at stage six, you, you take that uh, three stages away if we didn't have the strike. So we still would be in this predicament. We would still be load shedding. It would still be a crisis but it wouldn't be feeling as intense because we know that at 6,000 megawatts of rotational cuts, we're getting about six hours a day in our households and our businesses, which is very, very debilitating. It's very confidence sapping for business. It undermines investor confidence. For society as well, it's very frustrating. You can't do your normal business. And in the educational sphere, and it's a time when a number of students might be studying or writing exams, it's, it's a very, very difficult period. to to, to sort of navigate both at work and at home. How have other stakeholders been responding? I think the overwhelming sense is one of anger at the moment. I think there was something of a resignation of attitude ahead of the stage six. I think uh, people had been, the communication had been quite clear that this was going to be a difficult winter. But I think that the attitude has definitely hardened and there's one of a growing anger in society and among stakeholders, and a growing call for urgency from those that have the levers of power to deal with this. Now, we know that Eskom has some of those levers and need to get this industrial action behind them, and that has been difficult. And we know from a previous wildcat strike that they had that it does take some time to work this out of the system. And there are suspicions uh, because of the recent sabotage that the, the motivation is not just wages, but there's an element here Uh, of of politics at play. So there's growing anger with Eskom, but I think there's also growing, definite growing anger with government, which really does hold a lot lot of the levers in its hand and is just not pulling them. And uh, I think there's particular frustration with government denying that they're responsible for the current crisis and holding up its hands and saying, well, Eskom just needs to get its energy availability factor up when we've known that this is a secular trend. This is a baked in trend of declining EAF and it's not going to recover anytime soon. And Eskom has made it clear for three years that they need four to 6,000 megawatts of additional capacity in the system just to be able to maintain the fleet, not to create any space for growth and development in the economy but or growth in demand, but li- literally just to create space for proper planned and regular maintenance, which has been neglected for so many years and intensified during the state capture years. This anger in society, I think it's reached a tipping point. We see the the, uh, business has made statements, organized business. It's fairly cooperative at this stage from business. Uh, Labor has not been as cooperative. We know that they are at the heart of the current problem. But I think there's this uh, important going back to the central bargaining forum uh, today on Friday, and getting uh, sort of communication lines open again. I think there's maybe more of a spirit of uh, collegiality emerging there, but society is angry and wants to see real action. I think that's really the response from stakeholders. We've moved from resignation to growing anger. Is there any way out of this confidence sapping situation? Well, I think that it does require multiple uh, 
players all pushing in the same direction, all facing the same way, and uh, all agreeing to a, a sort of a program of action. And we haven't had that. And yes, Eskom does need to get its energy availability factor up as much as possible, but that's not going to happen overnight. And it needs time and space with those plants to improve that. And some of those units are just have to go, going to be retired. I think that's the reality. They're not going to ever be reliable enough to have a stable system from the coal fleet. We therefore need to accelerate the non-ESCOM options. So we need to have a plan to do that. And that's really fairly simple in terms of the technology solution. We may talk about coal, we may talk about nuclear, but that isn't going to cut it in the near term. It, it can't bring in the electrons uh, very quickly. It takes very many years to build those sort of conventional plants and they're not part of the solution and they shouldn't really be being discussed other than trying to get the Eskom fleet to operate much better and to get Kuberg back online as quickly as possible. So those are out of the question. It's really about adding solar, wind and storage as quickly as possible. That's where the solution lies. The good news about that is that solar and wind is now the, are the, now the provider of the of the cheapest electrons in South Africa by far. And obviously, because it's variable, it needs to be complemented by flexible solutions. And there, there's a number of storage options, but the most immediate storage option that can be added is definitely battery energy storage. We've seen in other jurisdictions or other countries around the world how quickly you can add these batteries. We see our households have added battery capacity. We're seeing solar proliferate around the country, but also batteries in, the, uh, in, in people's houses. Uh, I think there's been a shift from diesel generators to batteries over the last five years. So batteries are definitely part of the solution. We need to really find a way to end the blockages to a mass rollout, which is not going to come from Eskom. It has to come from the private sector. The private sector in terms of the business sector but also in terms of private households and residents, that there's a they want security of supply and they should be incentivized to do that. Maybe in some form of feed-in tariff for municipalities, but we need that the large scale. We need all the impediments to large scale wind, solar and storage to be removed as quickly as possible, even if there's a sunset clause around it. So you may have a, a sort of emergency period where you, you put these um, these uh, uh, the framework in place so that we can respond quickly and you then maybe tighten up at some point, but we're in an emergency and we need to act like it. And I think we still aren't. We're still in a mode of pointing fingers and suggesting that Eskom's EAF will sort it all out. We know that we know from experience that's not going to be the case. So we need a new game plan. And it looks like this may be a tipping point because stage six is unacceptable and untenable for society and business. And uh, the president is taking a personal lead, which is important because we have a very unsupportive energy department, energy ministry at the moment, and we need uh, proper leadership here. And the right sounds are coming out of the presidency. And I think now it's about getting everyone aligned behind a solar wind and storage rollout as quickly as possible with the correct frameworks and incentives in place, including possibly a feed-in tariff for residents and households, and to use the potential unused lever, other than in some uh, some locations, of the municipalities. They know the electricity system. They have been responsible for electricity systems over many years. And I think they can play an important role too. And we see how Western Cape has responded. And we can see that every time we in, uh, uh, in load shedding as the rest of the country, Western Cape is two uh, stages below us. So there, there is a possible template uh, there. But I think we need to really use those levers. So the big business, uh, big utility scale from business, um, and then we need this, this, the big municipalities to come to, through with either solar, wind and storage, possibly more and more storage. They would play that. That could be an important contribution as more variable renewable energy gets introduced. And then we can have the households that have the means also uh, trying to play their part and not restricting them from actually injecting electricity into the grid. So I'm hoping that this is a tipping point, that we have a totally different mentality when it comes to this. We can't see the private sector and, and society as supplementary to Eskom. This is the new game in town. These are going to be the main energy providers of the future. Eskom really is going to transition more and more to being a uh, transmission grid company and a system operator. And one of the components 
competing in the generation space, but not the only one. We've seen what's happened in other sectors, such as telecommunications, when you when you open the market. So I think this is a wake-up call, and we need to not waste this crisis. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletters.